I am Dave, the Amateur Magus. On this channel, I talk all about the mechanics behind ceremonial magic, occultism, esotericism, and the mechanics behind everything you can find within a dusty old grimoire. If you enjoy my content, consider subscribing and share it around with people you think might enjoy it wherever you think that might be. If you really enjoy my content, consider subscribing to me over on Patreon. If you are already watching this on Patreon, you have my thanks for your continued and ongoing support. Today we're going to be talking about incomplete versus complete magical systems, and why incomplete systems, while being okay for beginners, are not the best to stay with. And there's reasons why. So, let's first define our terms. What do we mean by a complete versus an incomplete system? A complete system is going to be an expandable system, primarily through going to spirits or the like. Whatever you need is going to be able to be solved, and you're going to be able to go get a ritual, primarily from a spirit or some kind of external thing for the system that you are working with in a complete system. An incomplete system, likewise, is going to be a system where that is not possible. You really can't expand an incomplete system, as counterintuitive as that is. Now, the reason why you can't expand an incomplete system is because the methods and the framework for expanding the system is just not there. It's just not a possibility, because something in the system is limiting or something in the system is just not applicable. Something in that particular system and that particular framework of magic is missing to where you can't just go ahead and use that framework for your entire spiritual practice. Does this mean that we should not use incomplete magical systems? Well, you already have implicitly, through doing the Lesser Banishing Ritual of the Pentagram, used an incomplete magical system before. That is the system given by the Golden Dawn. Now, the thing about that is that sounds a little bit weird for people, but let me let me explain. There's a couple of core things that make a Golden Dawn ritual a Golden Dawn ritual. And maybe this is just me, but I have personally found the Golden Dawn ritual is very rigid and you can't really expand it, nor would you want to. If anyone has read the Z2 documents and read the frameworks for the Golden Dawn rituals, every single initiation, well, every single evocation, is initiating the spirits into the Golden Dawn in order for them to share secrets with you, because if they're initiated, you can share secrets between the two of you. Now, I don't know about you, but I have never done a Golden Dawn-style ritual well, a Golden Dawn-style evocation, the way that it is written in the Golden Dawn. And I don't know why you would want to, to be perfectly honest with you, because it sounds like an absolute nightmare, and I've read that document a couple of times trying to figure out if it's a blind or not, and I think that it's genuinely just over-designed. And by extension, if you go ahead you will notice that if you start practicing as a Golden Dawn Magician, your methods for doing magic will start to become less over-designed over time. And what do I mean by over-designed? The real problem with Golden Dawn Rituals is that Golden Dawn Rituals do like six different things, and people think they do one, different, one thing based on the name alone, right? So... The Golden Dawn rituals that you have, that we have access to, usually do like five different fucking things. Straight up, they do a lot, and they're very complicated, and there's a lot of moving parts to them. But, people get fixated on one particular part, and think that that is the only thing that it does. I did an entire video on the Lesser Banishing Ritual of the Pentagram because of this. Now... There is some admission that it is an incomplete system in the system itself, and that is what was adopted by Thelema as well, as going in and trying to get the KNC of the HGA. Now, when you get your HGA, the HGA, if you do the Book of Abermelon, the Book of Abermelon is a complete system. The Book of Abermelon is a complete magical system 
that you go through and you can work out of the Book of Abramelon theoretically for the rest of your life after you've gotten it and you've completed the Abramelon and you've gone ahead and you've gotten the KNC, you've bound the demons, you can go and you can make an infinite number of letter squares. You can just go ahead, talk to the demonic princes, the demonic kings, evoke them and be like, okay, who among you runs this task? Okay, you run this task? All right, I need a servant and a letter square to get me this specific thing that I personally want. And, or, you can go to your Holy Guardian Angel, and your Holy Guardian Angel will instruct you on who to go to and who to cast for in order to make sure that you get what you're looking for. Because sometimes the... And this is actually mentioned in the Book of Abermelon. The Book of Abermelon says that sometimes you will want things that are not in the book. There is an entire section of letter squares for curing sicknesses. For curing sicknesses, they don't list every disease that we would know in the modern day because one, medical science wasn't there, and two, the way sicknesses was understood was just not there. That being said, there are letter squares for curing sicknesses that were common in those days. Now, if you go ahead and you want a letter square for, say, curing some kind of illness in the modern day, the book gives instructions and you can presumably go to the angel for better instructions if you can't use it as written, which I'm guessing most people have problems doing the regular Abramelon, doing the instructions listed for getting new letter squares seems like an actually daunting task even for me. So, that is what I mean by a incomplete versus a complete system. The system is going to be capable of growing and adapting, kind of expanding, to the needs that you will be having as you continue with your magical practice. It's There's a reason why candle magic became as popular as it did in the age of the internet. It is because, if we think about it, candle magic can do basically any manifestation you want as long as you know what you're trying to get and you can use different candles hell you can use the wrong colors of candles you can use the wrong correspondences and it will still maybe manifest just in a really shitty way but if you were to ask me how do you manifest money in the golden dawn system i couldn't tell you and in fact i only have one story and this is a story about Israel regarding himself, so you know it's going to be interesting. I only know of one person who has ever used the Golden Dawn system to make money, and that was the man himself, Israel Regardi. And the way the story goes is this. Israel Regardi once asked the spirits to allow him to just do magic full-time. He wanted to just do magic, only magic. That was all he wanted to do. And he got a stock tip from one of his therapy clients that he ended up recognizing as, okay, well, that's a ma that's a weird topic to bring up, so that might be that I should follow up on that. And so he goes ahead to the stockbrokers and he invests. And he makes so much money, he becomes fabulously rich, and then he never has to work a day in his life. Now, he did because, you know, he was bored and he wanted to do something that was actually grounding and he enjoyed what he did. So he had enough money to just... He had fuck it money after that point, for those of you who know what that term means. And for those of you who don't, fuck it money is when you don't need to... You are no longer beholden by the typical 9 to 5 day job rules. You can just do whatever you want because you can just say, fuck it, I have the money, I can just do whatever I want. That is what happened to Regardi. He's the only person I know of that has a strong, you know, he's the only person I know of that really has a good, compelling argument for, yes, you can do manifestation magic. And I believe he went to a spirit for it. I don't even know what the name of the spirit is, but he got the stock tip so he could do magic. He cast to be able to do magic full time. And then he got the ability to do magic full time. And then he did. Right? He became Crowley's assistant later on after this, I believe, and the rest is history. But, as I have said, this is an outlier case. There really is no method of doing manifestation magic 
to my knowledge, directly in the Golden Dawn system, other than going to spirits. And let's touch on that. Now, the primary way you're going to expand a magical system is by going to spirits. That's just straight up, that's just how that's going to work. Now, the thing about that is you can go to spirits, and spirits will 100%, as long as they're being honest with you, give you the best magic. There is no doubt in my mind that a spirit will give you better magic nine times out of ten than you could generate yourself. Now, you could go ahead and you could try to make a sigil or you could try to do that kind of thing, but if you're looking for like a hardcore magical ritual, you don't just write it yourself. You go to a spirit. Now, Depending on the spirit, they're going to give you different kinds of magic that usually will fit in the framework you're using, but they won't be specifically that system. So I've gone to elemental spirits in the past, and the elemental spirits have never fucking given me a Golden Dawn style ritual, despite the fact that I regularly use the Golden Dawn style methods of getting to the elemental planes and then conversing with the elemental kings. They have never fucking given me a Golden Dawn style ritual. In fact, I have never had this happen ever with any spirit that I've talked to. I have had them give me ceremonial magic, but I've never had them tell me, hey, here is a, like, ritual that you can use that would fit in what I understand to be the Golden Dawn style framework. Usually it is a generic ceremonial ritual. It's not a Golden Dawn style specific ritual. This includes the Archangels Raphael and Mikael, who I've gone to a couple times for dedicated rituals for a specific task, and they have given me a ceremonial ritual, but it wasn't very Golden Dawn at all. It didn't have, like, the chanting of god names. It had very small things. It was actually something more akin to what you would see in my post Melon writings for when I'm doing rituals, come to think of it, as weird as that is for what it's worth. Speaking of which, the Melon is going to be one of the systems that is actually a complete system. Now, uh, this is going to be one of the magical systems that is going to be complete, and the reason why it's complete is because... It actually gives an in-system method for expanding your needs and desires. For example, there is an entire section of how to cure diseases and sicknesses, and it gives you methods for expanding that, which is quite useful because most of the diseases we've actually kind of eliminated in the modern day, or we don't need to worry about. And so it gives a method for expanding those for curing diseases that you might want, like food poisoning. Food poisoning is not listed there, but you could use it to, like, get a square to cure food poisoning, if that is your want. Now, let's answer the million-dollar question. Are incomplete systems valuable for us as magical practitioners? That being said, now that I've talked about all of the problems with them, let's talk about the good things about ma incomplete magical systems. Incomplete magical systems, at least in the West, are the training and starter systems. These are going to be your Golden Dawns, your Thelemas, and anything that you can just pick up as a solitary practitioner and begin doing. Now, you're not going to want to stay in this tradition that you start with, generally speaking, because at least in the case of the two that I mentioned, those are both going to push you towards getting the KNC of your HGA, which is actually going to lead you to a more complete and more functional magical system for you specifically. So just in review, Incomplete systems are going to be magical systems that you cannot easily expand within their own systems framework. This is going to be things like the Golden Dawn system primarily, and this is going to generally lead you to, as your magical practice develops, going into a more complete magical system that will allow you to do the things that you will need to do as your magical practice develops. In the Golden Dawn system's case, there's not really a good thaumaturgical component to it. It's all basically theurgy. It's all basically spiritual development. And that being said, sometimes you need to... Sometimes you want to manifest money spells. Sometimes you want to do a love spell. There's no judgment here, but there is not really a good framework for doing that in the system as presented. Over time, you're going to want to go to things like the system that the Holy Guardian Angel is going to give you, which is going to give you a much more complete and expandable magical system. That being said, I have been Dave the Amateur Magus. If you enjoyed this content, 
please feel free to subscribe and share it around with the places you think. Let me know what you thought about this one. Uh, let me know. I know this was a bit of a weirder topic than what I usually cover. So just leave me your, leave me your thoughts in the comments section down below on what you think about this. And if you really enjoyed this content, feel free to subscribe to me over on Patreon. We got a lot of good content. New videos go up on Patreon first. And yeah, so I have been Dave the Amateur Magus. Hope you are having a good day. If you're not having a good day, hope your day gets better. Take it easy. Take care.